Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting to order. It's our uh, Wednesday, October 12, 2022 uh, meeting of the uh, Wallachian Planning and Zoning Commission. But all please rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And at this point in time, I'd like to introduce the members of the commission uh, that are here this evening. To my uh, immediate uh, right is Jeff Cohan, a commission member. To uh, my immediate left is uh, Steve Allenson, also a commission member. And next to Steve is Dave Parent, who is an alternate on the commission. At the uh, lower table to my left is Cheryl Ann Tubby, who is our recording secretary. And next to Cheryl Ann is Kevin uh, Pagini, who is our town planner. And I'm Jim Seichter, the uh, chairperson of the uh, commission. Uh, we had the first item, one of the first items on our agenda was to consider the minutes of our September 12th, 2022 meeting, but I think as uh, individuals familiar with this commission can see that there's three members of the commission that are here uh, unable to attend the meeting this evening. So we're going to uh, kick over to uh, our uh, November meeting uh, consideration for the, uh, the minutes of the uh, September uh, 12th, 2022 meeting. Uh, before we get to uh, our first uh, order of business, I'd like to announce that there's two items that are not going to be heard this evening at the request of the uh, both of the applicants. Uh, both of them are old business. The first one is uh, item number three, which is a site plan warehouse, 5 Research Parkway, Wallingford LLC, 5 Research Parkway. And the next is uh, a, a site plan warehouse, Mark Development LLC, 1107 Northrop Road. So again, those two uh, applications uh, are not going to be heard this evening, so they will be uh, you know, heard in our uh, November meeting. So it brings us to our uh, first order of business, which is a, uh, a public hearing. It's a zoning text, amendment, uh, zoning text and map amendment to section 4.23, Incentive Housing uh, Overlay District, section 4.23D, and uh, section uh, uh, 23E to create a new subdistrict to increase unit density allowances of affordable units to 50 units per acre. Uh, and uh, Mr. Allison, if you would please read the legal notice and note all correspondence for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Number 904-22, a zoning regulation text and map amendment to section 4.23, incenting housing, incentive housing Overlay District, sections 4.23.D and 4.23.E, to create a new subdistrict to increase unit density allowances for affordable units to 50 units per acre. And for the record, we have correspondence to the Connecticut Department of Housing from our town planner, along with the proposed. Um, Amendments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Allison. And I didn't mention uh, Mr. Parent, obviously, is uh, neither Mr. Fitzsimmons nor Mr. Uh, Benoiner here. So if you would uh, choose, you can choose to sit in for either one of them. There you go. Uh, and uh, Mr. Pacini, if you would please uh, bring us up to speed on uh, this uh, application as it is from the uh, Commission. Uh, so this is something that we workshopped a couple of months ago and that we discussed uh, pretty recently. It's increase uh, density allowances for affordable units to 50 units an acre uh, in a specific sub-district uh, that is shown on the attached maps in your packets. Uh, that map will be included uh, in the zoning regs. It currently <laughs> is not in the zoning regs, uh, so I will be putting that as an appendix uh, to the back of the zoning regulations. So, the uh, sub-districts for the incentive housing zone are clearly defined uh, and shown. Uh, this, uh, I, we had a survey and the, the chosen name for the new sub-district is Downtown Development Corridor. Um, it'll consist of 20 parcels and will be roughly 7.2 acres in size and will allow for 50 units per acre uh, for the incentive housing zone for affordable housing. And also, part of this amendment is to 
increase uh, is to allow residential amenities on the first floor, such as lobbies, common areas, or recreational amenities, accessory to the residential building. Uh, I think that's basically the entirety of this amendment. Um, so essentially just uh, increasing in that specific area, but allowing for residential amenities on the first floor street level um, instead of requiring commercial retail businesses uh, on that street level in the entire district. Sure, and I guess I would add just one of the reasons why we're looking at this is I think most people are aware we really had no activity in the, uh, in, in the incentive housing zone. We also realized that the, uh, in our town center zone, uh, in, in fact, in some cases for market rate housing, you could in fact have more units per acre than you could in an incentive housing zone, which is certainly a, a conflict. Uh, you know, in order to uh, encourage people to uh, develop in our incentive housing zone, which one of the main focuses is to uh, provide affordable housing uh, at a certain percentage. So in order to you know, make that uh, feasible or economically uh, feasible for a developer, you obviously need to increase the density. Uh, so this was something that the commission had, had looked at for, uh, you know, for a bit of time and had uh, several discussions on that. And it was decided to uh, look to increase the density to that, uh, the 50 units uh, you know, per acre. Uh, commission members with any, any questions on, uh, on this? I guess I, I just have a, just, I guess an observation, that, and it kind of ties into, while we're not talking about the second item, which is the town center section, and, and looking at this, Mr. Pagini, on the, in the town center zone section, you know, we include, you know, uh, only a number of units required to be provided uh, mobility features in accordance with the Connecticut State, you know, building code, U.S. Department of Housing, uh, provided these units uh, do in fact provide mobility features may be located on the ground floor. So we have that, and it goes on a little bit more. We have that in the in the town center, but we don't have that in, in the incentive housing zone. And I think that that should be part of the uh, included in the in, in the incentive housing zone. That that language should be in there. That would be, you know, that would be my suggestion. And then also, I believe in the. Uh, It's the uh, yeah walkout basement. And, yeah, the walkout the the walkout basements are uh, you know are included in uh, in one but not in the other. So I, I think that you know we need to be, you know we need to be consistent with mm -hmm. both of that. And then also I think we. Uh, mentioned before, but I think it got kind of lost uh, in some of this discussion. The, uh, the remainder of the, of the sub-districts in the incentive housing zone that are still less than some of the densities within the town center. So I think just the, the remainder of the downtown core and Meadow Street sub-districts right now are less, but Meadow Street obviously is a different uh, criteria probably. So. I don't know if it would be wise to go any higher. In, I think we need, but. you know, I, I think we need to look at that. I certainly like to have discussion from other commission members, not only the ones that are here this evening, mm -hmm. uh, but the ones that are not, because I, I think we we need to look at that also. Uh, so we don't have a, a case where if you're looking to develop using the town center regulations, which would be market rate housing, right. and you and but on the same property, if you're saying you're going to do incentive housing, and it's oops. <laughs> I can only I, I, I can do less rather than more. So I think that's something that we need to uh, to look at uh, to look at also. Is that something where it could be uh, worded similarly to the town center, where it's units per acre and lots under twenty five thousand square feet, and then another higher units per acre and lots over twenty five thousand square feet, something similar? To that yeah that would be my you know that would be my suggestion but again there's you know other commission members that uh, 
you know, been very actively involved on this that unfortunately are not able to be here this evening. So, right. you know, I don't want to drive the ship here without having other people uh, having the opportunity to comment. And then one of the other things that we did discuss, but not to a great length, is you know, to cons possibly to consider other uses on the first floor. And I, I guess I would look to you to come up with, uh, to come up with some suggestions which, that are uses that we might, uh, you know, that we might want to consider. You know, that, obviously that's for, a, you know, for, another, uh, for another meeting when we bring this up. Other uses as in what's allowed there now or? Yes, well, I, I think, I'm not sure if you were here or not, uh, when uh, the uh, Bank of America, I think I believe it was Bank of America building uh, that was, you know, that, that building was sold on, you know, on Center Street. And there was a business that wanted to move in there. You know, it, uh, that use was not allowed uh, initially. Right. And then there was some modifications made. And in fact, uh, there was some change to the regulations. So I, I, think, I think when we look at it, most people felt that that use was certainly a, you know, an appropriate use. And there, there, may or may, there may or may not be other ones that are somewhat similar to that. Uh, or businesses that may be similar that, uh, you know, may be appropriate. Right. You know, rather than, you know, rather than st you know, sticking uh, straight just with retail or so. Right. So that's, I, I think that's something to at least look at, consider, and have a couple, you know, a couple options to at least discuss. Okay. So if there's... Yeah, Mr. Um, Mr. Cohen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with the uh, chairman's comments on, uh, you know, making our town center and incentive housing zone uh, regulations consistent. Um, I think that that is something that yeah needs to be addressed, and I'm I'm glad you brought that up. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd certainly be in favor of uh, looking at other. Uh, first floor uses, especially with, you know, the, the new town center and the densities proposed. I think uh, getting some um, innovative uh, ideas would be, uh, you know, very attractive to, uh, you know, poten potential development. So, yeah, I absolutely agree with this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. There's no other commission members. This is a public hearing. Uh, I think it's obvious that this is going to be continued to uh, a future meeting, but it is a public hearing. We'd certainly be interested in uh, comments uh, from, uh, from members of the public. So any members of the public who would like to speak, please come forward. There's only this microphone right to my right, your left, that's uh, it's going to be used. So again, come forward, name and address. Good evening, Joe Mira from Economic Development Commission. Just a point of clarification, if I could. The apartments, uh, the easy access apartments you speak of on, on the first floor, I understood that they would be accessed at the rear of the building, not in the front. In other words, there wouldn't be apartments on the fr first, first floor on Route 5. Is that my understanding? Uh, Mr. Pagini, I'm going to toss that one to you. <laughs> um, yes, essentially, they cannot be located in the ground level street area, street facing area of the building. So anything that would be ground level and street facing, I mean, the, it doesn't say where the access should be, but the actual unit has to be uh, not ground level or street facing. Okay, and just for a point of information, the EDC hasn't made a formal vote on it, but there has been discussion and they are in favor of the, uh, the increases. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Other members of the public? Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the Commission, um, for the record, my name is Mark Bosniak of uh, Green Hill, Rhode Island, originally from Wallingford, Connecticut, and I'm the owner of uh, 28 North Colony, uh, which is in both uh, districts, the incentive housing and the town center. 
Uh, so firstly, uh, I'm here to support amendments 904 and 905 and thank the um, commission for its support for redevelopment in the district. Um, I'd also ask, like to ask if you would uh, also consider adjustments to the parking requirements. And so I'll first ask the commission, is this the appropriate time uh, for me to make my comments on that? Oh, absolutely. We're talking about, you know, the, uh, these regulations, so it certainly would be very appropriate. Okay, great. Well, I think along with the density, the parking is, uh, is linked to that and is just as important to the development uh, scenario as, as is the density. And um, I'd like the commission to consider reducing the parking requirements in, in the district because I, I think that's the best design. Uh, and if I could take a minute and explain why I think that's the case. Uh, I think, um, firstly, I think the, the key driver to reducing uh, dependence on automobiles is um, giving residents uh, alternatives as far as their commute to work. And thankfully, this district offers a lot on that behalf. We have the new metro station that provides uh, rail service to both New Haven and Meriden. New Haven and Meriden are the two uh, top destinations for Wallingford residents who work outside of Wallingford. And I, I think uh, especially important is the fact that you could get from the metro in Wallingford to the State Street New Haven station in 11 minutes uh, for $3.50. So this is a great benefit, and I think we should, it's something that could be encouraged, and it reduces dependency on, on cars. Uh, secondly, there's quite a few employers right here in downtown Wallingford. So from, li from living at, uh, near the train station area, there's quite a few places that people could walk to work from that area, and that's part of the support. And thirdly, um, many professionals now use Zoom and other remote, so they don't need so much cars to, to perform, per, uh, perform their work duties. Uh, secondly, I'd also say that another reason to reduce the cars is when there's lots of lifestyle-type opportunities in the downtown. And once again, uh, Wallingford has lots of that, cafes, shops, markets. So these are reasons why people who live in this district with fewer cars than what's, what's recommended and, or what's in the current zoning. And finally, I would make the point that it's just about impossible to build very large parking lots in the downtown district. It's a, it's a downtown infill location. And the owners in this area they don't own big rectangular square lots. You know, we own jagged pieces that are, you know, this part of the block where we have an owner right next door and we don't own their property. Uh, so it, it's very difficult to have these really large parking lots on these jagged, jagged type infill locations. So I think all of these are, are good reasons uh, to reduce the parking requirement. Currently in the incentive housing <coughs> zone, <laughs> I'm sorry. Excuse you. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, in the incentive housing zone, currently we require um, one and a half, or the zoning requirements require one and a half spaces per unit. In the town center district, they require two for a two bedroom and one for a one bedroom unit. So there's also additional parking required if there's any retail on, on that lot. And then there's some reductions for load factors based on the hours of the day and so forth. But the, the minimum requirements for development is, is based on the residential, the residential requirements. So those are the absolute minimums. So the one and a half for the incentive zoning or the two, and two for two bedroom, one for one, those are the absolute minimums. So I would like to suggest that the commission consider uh, one space per one residential unit uh, or less for the um, for the absolute minimum uh, for for the development, and um, I'd also so one really great resource that you you posted is the uh, the affordable housing Longford's affordable housing plan. There's a lot of really terrific information in that plan, and actually one of the recommendations of that plan was to reduce uh, parking requirements near the metro station. And so I think, um, I think my, my uh, scenario is consistent with all of that. 
Thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you. Any other members of the public who would like to uh, speak on this particular matter? Uh, I guess, Mr. Pacini, I bring it back to you. I know we had, you know, had some discussions about uh, looking at uh, reducing the parking, coming up with some minimum parking. I know that you had provided. I think the committee just recently provided the commission members with some, uh, you know, some information on that. Yes. And I'm not sure if you'd like to maybe just briefly share a little bit what perhaps you and I had, you know, discussed as far as looking at this and you know making considering reducing uh, you know the parking requirement so in my experience uh, from working with some other communities uh, in the past uh, some of the central business district town center type areas uh, had so much municipal parking had so much on street parking that they actually didn't have minimum parking requirements uh, for businesses I don't know if that's too much of a leap at this point uh, but I would consider since uh, mr. Bosniak did come in uh, for this development with our current proposal and the the math without providing underground parking did not work in his favor even with the reduction uh, that are considered um, well so I would, again it may just, it, I guess I would say it may not be just in his favor but it could correct. quite possibly be in a lot of other yes. people's a lot of other property owners favored you know can, when, when we start looking at some of the properties and mm -hmm. how much uh, the size lots that some of these properties are on yes. doesn't necessarily uh, uh, provide a lot of area for parking. So I would which, agree which, that which could be a, you know which could be an impediment to having as much as we'd like to see development there. It could be an impediment to that development. <clears throat> so it's not really specifically just toward one gentleman's right you know uh, property or what he what he would like or not like to do with it, but maybe more encompassing multiple properties in that area. So I think they, they are, like you said, they are linked yep. in a sense. So um, I would think if, you know, if, you're, if you're not comfortable reducing it for the entire district at this point, maybe consider just the downtown development corridor sub-district <coughs> for now, or maybe some other, maybe some other language that, you know, if you can look at the town center regs and see how else you could construct it um, if you're not comfortable fully reducing minimum parking requirements in that district. Um, I think it could be a, maybe a, a discussion at, at next meeting when there's more commission members present, um, something of that effect. But I think he, he does make a good point and it is something that is, that is common in, in planning practice uh, in principle. So um, it, does, it does allow for lower development costs for smaller businesses. Um, they don't have to provide as much parking at first, especially in the town center when you're looking to attract businesses. Uh, so there are a number of positive aspects to it, uh, especially in, especially in uh, close proximity to the train station. So. so with that, it seems like you have some more work to do for, uh, or not, not work to do, but another assignment for our, you know, our, next, uh, our next meeting to uh, provide some, you know, some options or suggestions rather for the commission to uh, you know to consider with respect to with respect to the parking and again whether it's for the whole town center whether it's for certain uh, uh, you know s just certain areas uh, that may or may not be closer to you know to the train platform mm -hmm. uh, to you know perhaps initially see how that works or doesn't work and whatever it, it just seems that there's several things that could be uh, that could be considered any other commission members that would like to comment on that? Sure. Yes, Mr. Perrin. Now, I'm listening to this, and I think, the, you know, the point was we're supposed to, you know, requiring the property developer to have so many spots, and he's got a funny-shaped lot, you know, and he can't make triangular parking spaces. But yet we haven't considered the fact, well, Okay, he can't do it, but his property is adjacent to, you know, some substantial uh, public parking. So, I mean, can that be a consideration? Says, so, okay, look, you cannot, okay, we can say it's one space per unit. When it turns out there's two people with cars living there, and <clears throat> one means, uh, but one that could easily park in a municipal parking lot. 
Is that something that we consider and say, well, yeah, we can go ahead and do this? Well, you can consider pretty much anything you'd like. No, to I mean, consider. I mean, consider, but I mean, it's one, I mean, but is that a possible? I'm asking, is that a possible solution? Well, it may very well be. Again, there's, there's, you know, all various things that come into when, when you know, when you make a decision, uh, there's a whole host of uh, variables that come into it, and certainly that could be, you know, for yeah. one person that could be something that they would consider a positive. Someone else, you know, may say, well, no, it's just public parking, and it should. You know, it should be for, you know, just businesses. Uh, you can, it, it depends on one's perspective, but certainly I wouldn't say that that's not a, not a valid, uh, not a valid uh, position to consider. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Cohen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm in favor of uh, looking at uh, reducing the uh, parking re requirements in the uh, town center area. I th again, I think, um, you know, based on the gentleman's comments, he's, he's absolutely spot on with, you know, a lot of folks are, you know, not really commuting anymore, doing a lot of work from home. And, um, you know, with the uh, access to the uh, train station, um, you know, I think this is a really, really good, um, idea to take a look at, um, and I, I, I either read in the paper today or I looked at um, tomorrow. We have our regional meeting, um, regional planning meeting, and I believe uh, there are some discussions statewide. And I, I, it may be brought up again at the meeting tomorrow to you know discuss exactly this, reducing some of the. Uh, parking requirements in, in downtown areas. So I, I think, you know, if we could get ahead of this, all the, all the better for us. Good. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Seeing that uh, there are uh, no other comments from commission members, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Pagini, you have a fairly good idea of the, what the commission would, uh, what we're considering and what we'd like to be able to discuss at our next meeting. So. That being the case, I would just entertain a motion that we continue this, uh, this application to our uh, November meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to continue the zoning text and map amendment in incentive housing zone application 904-22 to our November meeting. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Allison. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? Good. And did you want another one for the uh, town center? Well, let's just, we, we have to call that one up. Oh, yeah, I'm get, getting ahead of myself. <laughs> yeah, before I go to the, uh, to the next item on the agenda, I know there was one or two gentlemen who came in uh, while we were discussing uh, the, uh, the first item on our agenda, I just want to announce that items, the old business items, just in case these individuals came in for this, the old business items, uh, number three and number four, which is five Research Parkway, as well as uh, 1107 Northrop Road, those two items are not going to be heard this evening. So if, uh, if anyone has come in to, uh, to participate in that, uh, Again, they will not be heard this evening. Which now brings us back, uh, brings us down to uh, item number two on our agenda, which is a uh, zoning text uh, and map amendment for section 4.26 town center, section 4.26 B15 to create a new sub-district to increase unit density allowances for market rate units uh, to 40 units per acre. And again, Mr. Uh, Allenson, would you please read the legal notice and note all correspondence for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Number 905-22, a zoning regulation and map amendment to section 4.26, town center, sections 4.26.B.15, to create a new sub-district to increase unit density allowances for market rate units to 40 units per acre. And we have the amendment, proposed amendment, excuse me. And we have correspondence from Mark uh, Bosniak, I apologize if I mispronounced that, sir, uh, to our town planner. Thank you. 
And uh, Mr. Pagini, again, uh, if you would uh, just like to uh, give a brief overview of this. Although very similar to the last one, uh, this is just for the town center zone, uh, so it creates the same sub-district in the same place, uh, but the town center currently does not have any sub-districts. This would be the only sub-district within the town center zone uh, currently, uh, so it's just structured a bit differently, plus the incentive housing zone does have to obtain approval from the state uh, Department of Housing, so I just separated them out, even though they're pretty much all uh, integrated into one discussion. Um, the uh, town center would allow 40 units per acre in this specific downtown development corridor, uh, as shown on the maps, which will be included uh, in the zoning regulations, like the, the other one will too. There will be Appendix A and Appendix B uh, showing the town center district, as well as the incentive housing zone district. Uh, they're both the, consisting of the same parcels. Uh, Notice was mailed out to all of the owners of those parcels just to give them a heads up. Um, and uh, yeah, same, same basic premise for this one, 40 units per acre in this sub-district as shown on the map. Um, and then uh, residential amenities allowed on the first floor, so the lobbies, common areas, are, are recreational amenities, accessory to the residential building. Um, and that would go under uh, the 15, uh, section 4.2615, so it would add just a, uh, another letter to that. <laughs> um, any other discussion aside from what we just had, or I think uh, it all kind of rolls into to one? Yeah, I think to a very large degree it all just kind of rolls into one, and uh, you know, unless commission members have any uh, other comments that they'd like to make, at least in my mind, I think it would be better to keep both of these, number one, the first and the second one, kind of all together on the same agenda uh, for, you know, discussion by, you know, all of the commission members. Don't know if other commission members agree with that. I believe they do. But again, uh, this is a public hearing, so if there are members of the public that would like to come forward uh, and make their comments on this particular uh, application, please feel free to come and do that. You know, obviously, we are certainly intend uh, to continue this to our uh, November meeting, so there'd certainly be opportunities at that particular time to voice any uh, comments, questions, or concerns. But I would would encourage members of the public if they do have, you know, some uh, some comments or questions right now, certainly please feel free to come up and uh, and make those comments. Seeing none, uh, it. At this point in time, then I guess I would entertain a motion to continue this application to our November meeting. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to uh, make zoning text and map amendment, town center, application 905, continue 905-22, uh, continue this to our November meeting. We have a motion to continue it. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Allenson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Good. Moving on. We're down to new business. Uh, it's a uh, site plan uh, for uh, an accessory apartment, uh, uh, 609 uh, square foot accessory apartment uh, by L. Sala at 1 Bernadette, Bernadette Lane. If the applicant would please come forward and uh, begin their uh, present begin preparing for their presentation. Uh, sir, you, please feel free to sit right there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, Mr. Allison, would you please note all correspondence for the record? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have the uh, site plan application along with um, photos, plans, and that sort of stuff. <laughs> we have an interdepartmental referral uh, date of receipt September 12th, 20, uh, 2022, from our town engineer. We have an interdepartmental referral, date of receipt September 12th, 2022, from our fire marshal. An interdepartmental referral, date of receipt September 12th, 2022, from uh, Scott Shipman, senior engineer. And we have a memorandum from our health department, 
dated September 29th, 2022. And if the applicant would please introduce herself and uh, begin your, I'm sure it would be a very extensive presentation. If you could please just make sure that the microphone is just pulled uh, just towards you so they could all hear you. Okay, Lisa Sala, um, coming here from One Bernadette Lane. Um, uh, looking to actually finish off a uh, small apartment attached to the house and um, actually here to do, um, to ask if we can do um, uh, my, a kitchen but with a, an island, that's all, really. Well, it's going to be, it, it's an accessory apartment, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Pagini, any comments uh, on the application? No comments as long as it stays in compliance with the regulations. Uh, this isn't a public hearing, but we do allow members of the public to comment on the application. Any members of the public like to comment on the application? Seeing none, unless you'd like to make any final comments on that extensive presents presentation, I think we'll ask for a uh, motion uh, on the application. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve Site plan, Sala, 1 Bernadette Lane, application 220-22. Site plan request for a 609.116 square foot accessory apartment located at 1 Bernadette Lane, subject to the following conditions of approval. <clears throat> Comments in inter office memorandum from junior engineer Scott Shipman to the planning and zoning department dated September 28th, 2022. Number two, comments of the Health Department in interdepartmental referral dated 9-29-2022. And final, inspection by the Zoning Enforcement Officer. Thank you, we have a motion on the application. Do we have a, a second? Second. Second by Mr. Allison, voting beginning with uh, Mr. Cohan. Yes. 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 And yes, your application has been approved. Have a good evening. Thank you. And by any chance, if you don't have the, uh, the items that Mr. Cohan mentioned that are subject to the approval, you can certainly get those from Mr. Pagini. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good evening. You too. Next item is uh, also a site plan. It's 492 square f uh, foot accessory apartment for uh, R&S Blakely at uh, 36 Jobs Road. Again, if the applicant would please come forward, begin preparing for his presentation. And Mr. Allenson, Please note all correspondence for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have the uh, application for the site plan along with uh, site plans. We have an interdepartmental referral date of receipt September 12th, 2022 from our town engineer. An interdepartmental referral date of receipt September 12th, 2022 from our fire marshal. An interdepartmental referral, date of receipt, September 12th, 2022, from Scott Shipman, Senior Engineer. And a memorandum from our Health Department, dated September 29th, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Allison. Again, if the applicant would please introduce himself and uh, begin his presentation. Hey, doing? My name is Dave Denicky. I'm doing I'm good. the contractor that's taking care of this for the homeowner. Uh, we're just looking to convert an uh, already un uh, under construction uh, addition, the customer decided that they wanted to turn it into an accessory apartment. We're just looking for the approval. Okay. Again, Mr. Uh, Mr. Pagini, comments? Uh, no comments. The addition was approved by zoning. It's out of the setback, so they're uh, all set as long as they are in compliance. So the addition was already constructed, and now they're looking, as, as I understand, now they're looking to convert it into an accessory apartment. Is that uh, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. Any comments, questions uh, for the applicant by commission members? And again, uh, any members of the public that would uh, like to uh, comment on the application? Seeing none uh, at this point in time, if there's no further comments from Mr. Pagini or the commission members, I'd entertain a motion on the uh, application. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve site plan for Blakely at 36 Jobs Road, application 221-22. Site plan request for a 492 square foot accessory apartment located at 36 Jobs Road, subject to the following conditions of approval. Number one, comments in inner office memorandum from junior engineer Scott Shipman to the Planning and Zoning Department, dated September 28th, 2022.
Number two, comments of the health department in interdepartmental referral dated September 29th, 2022, and final inspection by the zoning enforcement officer. We have a motion on the application. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Allison. Voting beginning with Mr. Cohan. Yes. 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 And yes, the application has been approved. And again, if you need any of those documents that were referenced, please you know, feel free to see Mr. Pagini. And have a good evening. Will do. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And it brings us to our next item. It's a site plan storage warehouse for uh, G. Gornali at uh, 89 North Plains Industrial Road. And again, while the applicant is beginning to prepare for his uh, presentation, his or her presentation, uh, if uh, Mr. Allison, if you'd please note all correspondence for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have an application for site plan along with a set of site plans. We have an interdepartmental referral data receipt September 12th, 2022 from our fire marshal. An inter-office memorandum from Scott Shipman, senior engineer, dated September 28th, 2022. A memorandum from Allison Kapaschinski, our town engineer, dated September 28th, 2022. And a memorandum from our health department, uh, dated September 29th, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Allison. If the applicant would uh, please introduce themselves and then you can begin your presentation. Hi, I'm Catherine Governelli. Uh, good evening, Richard Reynolds, uh, project engineer for the LRC group. Our street address is 160 West Street in Cromwell. Uh, we are the land surveyor and the project engineer for the project. Uh, the project is located at 89 North Plains Industrial Road, contains about six acres, and is located in the I-4 Industrial District. Uh, the map you see in front of me uh, is our existing conditions, property survey, and topographic survey. As you can see on the plan, the property contains five existing storage buildings with associated parking and access aisles um, for each of the buildings. An existing drainage system encompasses the property, uh, which collects stormwater runoff and pipes it to a uh, detention system in the front of the property along North Plains Industrial Road. All storage buildings are served by public sanitary sewer, water, and gas. The northwestern portion of the uh, property contains an existing parking area, um, a grassed area beyond, beyond the parking area, and uh, a wooded area along the Warble Cross Parkway. Property is located outside the 0.2% annual chance floodplain, the 500-year flood. Um, existing soil types on the property, uh, Penwood Loamy Sand, which has a hydraulic um, soil group A, which is identified as highly permeable soils. Site improvements associated with the project consist of the construction of a new warehouse building, a concrete staging pad in the back of the warehouse building. The existing bituminous concrete surface along the front and on the sides will, be, uh, will remain to be used for parking and access. A catch basin with a, a concrete galley and two dry wells make up the proposed uh, drainage for the project. The, the new building will be served by the same water, gas, and sanitary sewer. Stormwater runoff from the proposed roof area will be directed to the proposed dry wells. The concrete staging pad in the back will, will drain to a catch basin, which will discharge to a concrete galley. Um, since the soils are, are highly permeable, um, stormwater runoff will enter those, the dry well and the galley, and then infiltrate into the underlying soils. Um, the design of the drainage system takes into consideration the use of uh, infiltration into the underlying soils. Based on the high permeability, um, we thought that was um, a, good a good option for groundwater recharge and to handle the stormwater runoff without impacting um, the existing drainage system on the on the property. Also, the drainage proposed drainage system here uh, meets the 
net zero increase in stormwater runoff uh, per the town regulations. In front of you now is our erosion control and sediment plan. Uh, we have some sill fence in the back, a temporary stockpile area in the back, um, and some silt sacks we're going to put under the existing catch basins to trap sediment uh, during construction. Uh, we received comments from water and sewer last week, I believe, and uh, we received health planning and town engineer comments today. Um, they are minor in nature, um, so that we will work with the um, town staff to uh, satisfy um, those comments. Um, besides that, if there are any questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, first, before I ask commission members, Mr. Pagini, any, uh, any comments, any questions, uh, overview on the project? Uh, no, I have no major comments from a zoning perspective. Uh, we had a pre-application meeting. Uh, they seemingly, you know, meet all the regulations. So as long as they can work with the town engineer to address her minor comments, I don't see any uh, issues with this. Thank you. Uh, any commission members with uh, comments, questions for the applicant? Mr. Cohan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, since Mr. Fitzsimmons is not here, I'm going to ask his standing question. Uh, snow removal. Do you have any plans for snow removal? Where are you going to put that? Yes, yeah, so snow removal, um, there's no curbing on the, on the property, so it gets pushed off the edge of pavement. So it would be the same with this, either off the back or off the sides like it currently does. Existing snow piles don't get pushed back there as it stands now. If you could please. The existing snow piles don't get pushed back there as it stands now. Okay. There's ample space in the front and sides. Okay. Goes. Thank you. That's it. Any other commission members? Mr. Allenson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just out of curiosity, what type of storage is, storage is the building going to hold? Like what? Storage is actually like an ambiguous term. I'd, I'd more specifically address this as small commercial warehousing. We incubate a lot of small businesses. The majority of the businesses that uh, reside in these particular units are landscapers, tradesmen, electricians, plumbers, uh, specialized carpentry, cabinetry makers. Um, that specific building is actually going to be an existing tenant. It's Michelin Tire. It's been on the property for decades where the questions going is you know with equipment and potential spills from oil or anything else no, given nothing given like that, that nothing no. like that okay and if somebody does store landscaping equipment and something does leak um, does your lease have a provision for covering yes. that and cleanup and yes. remediation I'm all done thank you <laughs> thank you mr. Allison anyone else and seeing that we have no other uh, members of the public in the, uh, in the audience, uh, unless the applicant would like to make any uh, further comments, I'd uh, entertain a motion on the application. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve site plan for C, apologize for the name, Gornail at 89 North Plains Industrial Road, application 222-22. Site plan request to construct a 5,040 square foot storage warehouse at an existing self storage facility located at 89 North Plains Industrial Road on plans entitled Proposed Site Improvements, New Building and Staging Pad, dated September 7th, 2022, subject to the following conditions of approval. Number one, Comments of Town Engineer Allison Kapuscinski to Planning and Zoning Commission dated September 28, 2022. Number two, comments of the Fire Marshal in Interdepartmental Referral dated September 22, 2022. Number three, comments of Scott Shipman, Senior Engineer, Water and Sewer Department in Interoffice Memorandum dated September 28, 2022. Number four, comments of the Health Department in Interdepartmental Referral dated September 29th, 2022. Number five, an erosion and sedimentation control bond in the amount of 
$500. And number six, uh, six copies of the final approved maps forwarded to the Planning and Zoning Office. Thank you, Mr. Cohan. We have a motion on the application. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Allison. Voting beginning with Mr. Parent. Yes to who? Yes. Yes. And yes. Application has been approved. Have a good evening. You're welcome. And at this point in time, uh, Mr. Pacini, I'll uh, turn it over to you to uh, complete our, uh, our agenda. Absolutely. So uh, bond releases and reductions. Uh, this was just a small uh, single family residential house. Uh, so I went out and checked the property. Everything looks stabilized and uh, great. So uh, they can have that bond released. And that would be on the 46 High Street, Yalesville, is that correct? Uh, correct. Okay. Do we have a uh, motion uh, to, release, uh, to release the bond? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to uh, release the bond on 46 High Street, Yalesville, for Paul Pecoraro. Do we have a, uh, we have a uh, motion? Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Allison. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Moving on. Uh, there are no, there is no uh, reports of the zoning enforcement officer activity this month. Uh, we did have a discussion with the chairman in our office this morning. Uh, she is she has been very busy actually out uh, on the road, so she's having a hard time keeping up with compiling lists, keeping administrative functions. Um, so she would rather she would rather maybe change up. The format, if some of the commission, I know all of the commission members are not here this evening, uh, but there has been the suggestion thrown out to potentially go into, say, a quarterly report, but with the, with the option for each commission member to call the zoning enforcement officer on their own time if they have specific questions, concerns, uh, would like an update on activity. Um, and I believe the chairman sort of agreed with this this morning, but uh, something I, I believe we should discuss moving forward as to whether or not that's something that the commission would entertain or not. Again, I had just a brief discussion, you know, with, with Mr. Pagini this morning, as well as uh, with our uh, zoning enforcement officer. And, uh, you know, she had indicated that uh, there's two things that I guess impact that. One, she's you know, been very active, very busy with some zoning violations. Two, the existing report that we have, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Pagini, I think you know, she indicated it's a little bit, a little bit unwieldy. Uh, correct. If you would. Yes. Uh, and, you know, is looking to perhaps make some modifications to that, but thought that uh, certainly would be beneficial to her from a time management standpoint to, you know, provide that report to us on a, on a quarterly basis. But, you know, clearly uh, if, individuals have, you know, comments or concerns on zoning violations, uh, you know, she's always there to, you know, to answer those questions from, you know, commission members as well as from the public. Because I think we all know that to a very large degree we find out about zoning violations through people, you know, individuals, re you know, reporting it to uh, the, uh, the planning department. So, uh, you know, I guess uh, commission members, if anyone would like to make any comments on that, certainly we have you know, again, other commission members that are not here this evening that I'm, I'm sure would, would have some, uh, you know, some comments. So does anyone like to make any general comments on that right now? Mr. Allenson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, given the amount of requirements that we've asked to be put into the report, I think quarterly would be fine. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I, that I would ask is if there is ever a violation of note or of urgency or something else that it just be kind of brought ahead Absolutely. you know, you know if, if that were to come up usually we don't see those types of things so yeah. I don't think it's going to be an issue but I don't want it to be if we do do quarterly I don't want it to be it's only quarterly and then it gets put off for the quarterly if it can come in sooner <laughs> absolutely so, I think I think her idea was highlight any major ones, maybe possibly monthly, but then have a full report quarterly. So she can keep up with the actual enforcement and uh, on the job uh, activities, I guess. 
I, I would be I would be okay with that. I think that would be workable, and you know she has been extremely busy. So, you know, if we can do something to help her out, I think it's a good idea. Okay, Mr. Cohen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I have a slightly different take on this. Um, I, I, I don't think quarterly is sufficient. Um, you know, as, as it is, we get, you know, sporadic reports um, and not a lot of detail on, you know, specific actions that are being taken. I mean, you know, <laughs> we're hearing that uh, the zoning enforcement officer is very busy, but okay, well, you know, what, what are, what is actually being worked on? Um, I don't think we need a, um, you know, monthly report on, uh, you know, the roosters that, right. uh, you know, go around town. Um, but, but yes, I do agree that some of the um, larger uh, violations, like where we had the outdoor storage a couple months ago, things like that, mm -hmm. um, I think should be reported on a monthly basis. And I really, really don't think the uh, reporting that we've asked is that unwieldy. Um, you know, spreadsheets and database systems have been around for a while, and um, yeah, certainly it is a matter of, you know, taking the time to input this data, but once that's done, you know, it should be, you know, pretty easy to produce these reports. Now, you know, maybe it's a uh, learning curve at this point, you know, I, I don't know, but, but once the report is, you know, the format is completed, it, it, it should be a very simple matter to input this and, and produce a report for us. Um, quite honestly, I, you know, for me, that's really the only way that I get this information. I, I've had very few, um, you know, violations that I've actually reported myself, and you know, and then had the request information. But you know, we have had a few outstanding ones in the past, especially with uh, you know some of the uh, the wineries and, and things like that going back years. But I I I, I really think you know a monthly. A report on the um, uh, major violations is, is something that <clears throat> we should require, you know, an overall quarterly, you know, with the roosters included. Okay, I'm okay with that. But I, I do think something, mm -hmm. you know, as far as major activity should be reported on on a monthly basis. And yeah, not to belabor the point, but you know, if if I, I just don't have a full understanding of, you know, what what the issue is with, you know, the report itself. Again, you know, there's software that does this, and you know, is it inputting it? Is it, you know, learning how to use it? I you believe know, it, I believe it was the nature of how it was originally set up, and now she's sort of stuck in that format, and for her to actually take all of that <laughs> data and put it into another format that that is a lot better and easier to use. Uh, I guess maybe I, I can make a suggestion. It might be a benefit uh, at our next meeting if we ask Mrs. Tory if she could, you know, come to the mm -hmm. meeting and we can have that and, and discuss it. Uh, yeah. And discuss I, it, you know, discuss yeah. it with her. So, you know, it's not that, and I don't mean it this way, that we're getting secondhand information, but yeah. I think it might be more valuable to have her, mm -hmm. you know, indicate to us what, you know, what, what her issues may or may not be. Uh, and at least what some of her suggestions are, and that's then we can, you know, we can discuss it that with her. So I, I think that would be a, you know, a, a good, you know, a good solution, uh, you know, mm -hmm. to this or a good starting point. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think that's a good idea. The, you know, the, the other question I would ask and maybe have her prepare um, is, you know, isn't there, you know, some IT support that, you know, 
she could get if that's needed. I, I mean, I think it's, I think it's less the IT aspect and more of the time aspect. I, I don't think she just has enough time to sit and transfer all the information and data and everything else. So I'm not exactly sure of what the what the uh, what the issue is, but um, I think it was sort of explained to Chairman Sector this morning. Um, so I don't think she's averse okay. to highlighting the the large violations. I just think she doesn't want to have to sit there and do database entry on some of the minutia that goes on from day to day. So I think that's potentially the crux of the yeah. issue. Again, I think it'd be beneficial yeah. if okay. you know she were able to, you know, uh, attend our our, our meeting uh, next month. So you know she can indicate what some of her challenges are, and commission members can indicate what. You know what they would, uh, you know what they would like to see in, in items that are important to them. I think that would be, you know, would be very helpful. Absolutely. Good. All right, Mr. Pagini, Moving on. Uh, any uh, uh, change of use? Any comments on uh, any of those? I don't believe so. Uh, nope. Then the ZBA legal notice. Any commission members with any comments for the uh, the legal notice uh, for the uh, first for the items that were uh, I'm not sure if anyone has any questions on items that were either approved or denied for the September 19th, but then going to the uh, legal notice for uh, their meeting for uh, Monday, October 17th. Anyone have any on either one of those two items? Any any questions, comments? Nope. Seeing none, Mr. Pagini, I believe that uh, brings us to uh, the end of uh, end of this meeting. Is that a fair assumption? Yes. All right. Before I ask for a motion to adjourn, I, I would just like to uh, certainly I'd like to thank the uh, technical staff here, uh, you know, in uh, in the auditorium for the uh, you know the great job that they do in producing our our meetings. That's greatly appreciated. I know sometimes they're under some challenges that uh, certainly. Uh, or, or not they're doing, but they've uh, certainly, in my mind, have over overcome those challenges in a very professional manner. So with that, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn our October meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. All Allison. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions. We're adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen and lady.